Thank you girls and boys, big boys and big girls also, you're welcome. And let's see what tonight's story is about. It's a little bit chilly today, but because the sun's out, I thought I would come and read tonight's story outside. And we're just going to have to wait and see, girls and boys, if this one here is actually readable in one session, or I have to do it in two sessions. Wiggly Worm and the Garden Town. I'd actually like you to be down here so that you can watch the fishes in the pond. But because it has been slightly chilly, all the wee fishes seem to be hiding at the minute. So maybe we'll do that another day. Wiggly Worm lived in the backyard garden, just like mine, with his best friends, a snarky snail, rattlesnake, and munchy mosquito. As much as he loved wiggling around in the mud, Wiggly often wondered what it would be like to live in a town. Wiggly and his friends knew all about towns because they liked to listen to the kids who played in the backyard. The kids were always talking about how they had done this or that or gone here or there. Wiggly knew that towns had parks and stores and restaurants and bakeries and places to get sweet treats and that sounded absolutely wonderful to him. All we have here is plants, he said to his friends. Wouldn't it just be amazing if we had all kinds of special places to go like the kids always talk about? Hmm. I'd like that, said Rattles. So imagine a five-star restaurant where we could eat tasty little insects all day long. Except for mosquitoes, so of course. He added, glancing quickly at Munchie. Munchie laughed. I'd like a soda fountain where we garden creatures could order sugar water shakes and other yummy treats, she chimed in. I'd like a park, said Wiggly Worm. A beautiful park with a maze of fun wiggly tunnels to go through. Munchie's eyes lit up. Wiggly sighed, but if we could have a town, what would you want in it? Everyone knew that Snarky's favourite hobby was collecting shiny pebbles. That's a great idea, Wiggly Worm told him. He sighed again. All of his friends had great ideas. There has to be some way, he began. To build a town? asked Munchie, finishing his thought. Wiggly grinned at her. Exactly, we, the creatures of the garden, are going to build a town, he declared suddenly. Snarky once again rolled his eyes, but no one paid attention to him. They were very determined to follow through with Wiggly's plan. And so they did. Over the next several weeks, the garden friends collected trash that they found lying around, from soda cans that had tumbled out of the recycling bin, to a weather-beaten cardboard box, to an old baseball cap that was the perfect size for a mosquito-sized soda fountain. The friends used this junk to construct tiny buildings. They decorated their new business with colourful leaves and flower petals and he used rocks and pebbles for tables and chairs. Wiggly worked hard at making tunnels in the dirt for his new park. By the time they'd all finished, Garden Town had become to be a tiny town with a soda fountain, a park, a restaurant and a pebble shop. Wiggly Worm and his friends had proved that with a little hard work and determination, it is possible to make all of your dreams come true. Snarky Snail grumbled as he closed up his pebble shop for the night. The grumbles seemed to echo loudly. Snarky sighed. He was always grumbling and always grumbling. His friends thought of him as the grump of the group and he didn't blame them. The truth was that Snarky wanted to be happy but he didn't know how. Snarky was a baby snail. He was happy all the time. But then Grandpa Snail had died in the garden and left Snarky all alone in his garden. But that was way before Snarky had met his friends, Wiggly Worm, Munchy Mosquito and Rattlesnake. They had never met Grandpa Snail. In fact, they didn't even know he had existed. They had no idea why Snarky was such a sad snail. A part of Snarky wanted very badly to tell his friends how he felt about Grandpa Snail. If they knew why Snarky was so grouchy all the time, they'd be able, and sure, to cheer him up. But Snarky was afraid if he talked about Grandpa at all, he would start to cry. And he was too much embarrassed and proud to cry in front of his friends. 
Snarky sighed again. He'd just about reached his damp, muddy home when he ran into Wiggly Worm. Wiggly was wiggling his body from side to side as he slid through the garden on his belly. Look at me, Wiggly cried jubilantly. I'm a warm, warm line dance. Snarky felt his temper flare up. Keep it down, would you, Wiggly? He hissed. It's night time and some garden creatures might just want to get some sleep. Let's stop short. He looked very hot. As hot as if someone had slapped him. Snarky amazingly felt sorry for lashing out like that, but it was too late. He'd already hurt Wiggly Worm's feelings. I'll go home now, Snarky. Wiggly grumbled. Wiggly, wait! Wait! Don't go! But Wiggly didn't wait. And Snarky didn't blame him. I've got to stop being such a grouch, he said to himself. If I keep this up, I will lose all my friends. And it was then that Snarky realised that he had, and he must explain. The next day he found Wiggly Munchie and Rattles in the flower bed. They all grew silent when they seen Snarky approach. Snarky figured that they must have been sitting talking about his rudeness to Wiggly. Look, you guys, said Snarky. I owe you all an apology. Especially you, Wiggly. I'm sorry I snapped at you last night. Snarky's whole body trembled and shook as he spoke, as it was very, very hard for him to say. There's a reason I am grumpy, Snarky went on. Took a deep breath. I'm not saying it's an excuse, but there is something that makes me very sad. You see, I miss someone very much. And with that, Snarky told his friends all about his grandpa. Losing grandpa had changed Snarky's life, and he cried. And he explained this to his friends. But they didn't make fun of him. They hugged him very, very tight and listened until he'd finished talking. Oh, Snarky, cried Munchie. I'm so, 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 so sorry. I had no idea either, said Wiggly Worm. Me neither, Rattles replied. Snarky started to smile. You guys are just the best, he cried. And you know what else? It felt good to talk about my grandpa. Tell us more about him, Snarky's friends urged him. So Snarky spent the rest of the morning sharing story after story about his favourite snail in the world. And for once it almost seemed as if Grandpa Snail was alive. Talking about Grandpa made Snarky a much happier snail. And from that day on he hardly ever lived up to his name again. You see that? Look, I've got a little ant. Look, boys and girls. Can you see it? Got a little ant running about my storybook phone. <laughs> Maybe not such a good idea to come out to the garden after all. And look, I don't know if you could notice, but that little ant that was on my phone is now on my hair, boys and girls. So you have to look after and love all your wee creatures that you see in the garden. It's around my heart now, look. And we'll just wait until he falls off. Until the next time. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.